A lot of the times in badminton, choosing the easiest shot is better to play than trying to play a more difficult option. The smash is a great example of this, where a lot of players will often go for cross court or down the line smashes to try and find the tram lines. However, smashing down the middle is one of the most effective shots in badminton for several reasons. And when you watch professional badminton, they would play a smashes to the middle a lot more frequently than when they would aim for the tram lines. Just a quick reminder to please subscribe to the channel. Let's try to reach the goal of 5k subs. Thanks. Understanding the purpose behind your smash is crucial and varies depending on the position you are in the rally. Smashing from the backcourt rarely results in an immediate point. Instead, the goal here is always to try and maintain the attack and create opportunities for easier shots, while at the same time avoiding setups for you to be countered. If we look at this rally here, Wang Chi Lin plays great angled smash right to the middle of the court. Wang Chi Lin is a beast at 6 foot 2 and one of the best smashers in badminton. And playing this smash to the middle here is a great player like to, like I said, try to set up the winning shot, while also minimising of what can come back, and I'll explain this now. It's also the safest option to play. You aren't going to hit the shot out the side while aiming for the middle of the court. As soon as the smash is played, there's that split second hesitation from the Japanese pair, where they need to figure out which one of them is going to play it. It's actually even more perfect in this situation, where the Japanese pair are left-handed and right-handed, and shots to the middle will usually be more effective anyway. That split second delay, with how well angled the smash is, it limits Hoki's options, and the only play for Hoki is to play back to the net. And the idea here is for the Chinese Taipei pair, as this is exactly where Li Yang stood waiting. If the block to the net was a bit high, he's there to jump on it, and if not, he can take the shot really early anyway, and force another lift. Li Yang returns with enough easy but effective net back to the middle. The same lift again from the Japanese pair, presenting the same opportunity for Wang Chi Lin's steep smash to the middle. Again, Hoki can only really play another block to the net, but instead this time, Hoki's shot wasn't as tight and more to the side. Li Yang has plenty of time then to play a great spinning net shot, which wins them the point. This was played perfectly by the Chinese Taipei pair. They were fully in control of the rally, and the smashes to the middle did their job as setting them up perfectly to win the point. And it didn't even give the Japanese pair any chance of doing anything really different here. One reason why this was so effective, and why shots to the middle are so effective in general, is because they massively reduced the angle of the return. If you think about it, a smash to one of the sides generates a massive angle for the return to potentially be played into. If you look at this like a protractor, a smash to the middle, the shot can only really come back at about a 0 to 30 degree angle for it to stay in the court, compared to one down the line, which would come back closer to 50 to 60 degree angle if played cross court. And this matters a lot because that equals how far you need to move to get to the next shot. A return coming from 0 to 30 degrees from the middle, you can really you can reach quite comfortably. However, a cross court shot coming from about 50 to 60 degrees is much harder, and that's usually where the big gaps are. If we go back to this rally, let's look at what could have happened if Wang Chi Lin's smash was played down the line. First, of course, there's a chance that his smash goes out the side. Playing to the middle, you guarantee that it's in the court and at least makes your opponent have to return it. Another thing is that you would remove the confusion of who plays the return. Hoki knows it's 100% his shot to play. And then it provides him with more options. He could play the straight block to the net, which is the easiest option, and that allows him to follow that up by running to the net. Or he has the big angle cross court, which he could play to the huge gap on the left side of the court. Hoki has the option to play forehand or backhand in this scenario. Compared to down the middle, the Chinese Taipei pair know its only option is a backhand. It's just a great percentage play from Wang Chi Lin, at reducing the options from their opponent and maximising their chances. A few points later in the match, and you can see that sometimes the confusion with who is going to play the shot can straight up win you the point. For instance, this smash here from Kobayashi isn't even a full power smash, but goes straight through the middle of where Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin are. And they both could probably actually play this return quite easily, but they just aren't sure which one of them is going to hit it. A shot like this from Kobayashi, again, isn't designed to be a winning shot, but instead just to build the rally which, while keeping the shuttle down. It is something that more players need to utilise in their game. A lot of the times it doesn't even need to be a powerful smash to have a lot of success, and works great with half smashes or fast drops to the middle. Again though, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.